check, 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 check. Five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight. He's good? Solid? When he's getting ready to start his stream.
Five six seven eight five six seven eight. Check 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 check. Five six seven eight five six seven eight five six seven eight. Five six seven eight five six seven eight. Five six seven eight. Five six seven eight five six seven eight. Muted.
And tonight live from the PEC on the campus of Coppin State University in Baltimore, Maryland, it's Midnight Mayhem as we get to meet the 2017-2018 editions of the women's Eagles team and then the men's Eagles as well, as you can see from the live video stream and, of course, here on the live audio stream and on radio on WNSTAM 1570, the in market, if you will, home of the Cobb State Eagles here in Baltimore. The 17 18 editions on the women's side, head coached by Dwayne Burroughs. And for the first time on the men's side, it's going to be Juan Dixon. Let's go to my partner here at the table for the introductions.
So the biggest thing that jumps off the page at me to begin with is you've got a, a standout player from last year in Tierra Good who has now moved to a graduate assistant spot on Dwayne Burrow's bench. Twelve minutes have gone up on the clock for this scrimmage between the blue and the white as Coach Burrows has decided to split it up a certain way and as we were getting the announcement of the starting laps for each team it seemed at the outset at least in my humble opinion that the team adorned in the white uniforms tonight a little guard heavy if you will because it went two or three guards first and then one big for the blue and then the guards started to show up for the blue team as well so Coach Burroughs has done a job on balancing his squad as I believe we're going to have a, a three-minute warm-up session for the blue and the white before they will tip it off, if you will, in this women's scrimmage here at Midnight Mayhem. And with that, we graciously welcome in the head coach of Coppin State University Women's Basketball, and that's Coach Dwayne Burroughs. Coach, thank you for taking the time here at uh, Midnight Mayhem courtside. No problem. No problem. Looking forward to it. We were talking in the offseason about uh, bringing in some new additions. And we always talk about bigs and smalls. Well, you lost a pretty big one who's now a graduate assistant for you. Yes, yes, Tierra. Uh, just, I wanted to bring her on as a graduate assistant just so she can share some of her knowledge for that she's put, done for the past four years here at Coppin to some of the younger kids. We are a very young group, so we're going to need her to be on their side and push them, push them along the way. So now we talk about the new faces in this program, one of which is from Chicago, Illinois, going a little bi-coastal, if you will, in her college career so far before coming here to Baltimore. Yes, um, she was at Coastal Carolina. Then she went to a JUCO down in Florida. So we need her experience as well. You know, with the young group, we definitely had to bring in some experience, especially in the post. And fortunately, we were able to do that. And she played extremely well when we watched her a couple times last year. So it's a great addition to have her. Not to give anything away in the preseason, but with the fresh faces and the returners that you have, do you look to change tempo at all to go more up tempo, or with the bigs that you have, you've got a great post presence as well? No, we, we want to go up tempo still. Um, we have a bunch of kids now who can shoot the basketball. Uh, last year, who can shoot the basketball and handle the basketball, and that's why we needed to add the guards. Last year, we had one or two guards, but Genesis had to play 38 or sometimes 40 minutes a night. So fortunately, we're in a situation now where she can come out of the game, you know, get some rest and come back in. But the freshman that we brought in, probably four out of five of them can really handle the basketball. Is this a situation where you've got a handler like Genesis at that league guard, can move to the two as well, where you've got younger kids that are coming in, she can show them the way? Exactly. And that's fortunately what we wanted to do when we were recruiting last year. We wanted to bring in someone for Genesis to replace, to replace Genesis once she leaves. And fortunately, we were able to do that where she can actually, she'll be able to groom these kids for which, what we really want to do here. Are we going to get a great look the way you've broken this up? As I mentioned moments ago before you joined me, it seemed like the team in white started guard heavy against the blue big, and then you kind of tried to balance that out. Is that really how you scribbled the lineup when you put this whole thing together? We, we tried to balance it out as much as possible. My assistant coach was battling back and forth for who wanted who on their team. So it should be a pretty good matchup. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them play. So on the staff tonight, who, who's coaching who for the fans that are, that are watching and listening? Okay, my associate head coach, Jasmine Turner, uh, she was at Ohio Valley University, so I brought her in. How you guys doing? Good. Thank you. As we have the meeting of the officials, you. you can't get, well, you could get teed up. You could. <laughs> Shouldn't I'm, happen, I'm, but you could. I'm sitting in the stands for this one. I'm definitely going to sit in the stands and watch. And on this side, I got Colonel Arrington, who was assistant on our men's side. He'll be our assistant again this year with um, Damon Nichols as well, who was with me last year. Well, you're more than welcome to pull up a seat if you want to, or you can take it in the stands, whichever I'm, way you want to go. I'm sitting with you tonight. I'm not going back okay. out there. Okay, well, then I'm giving up my seat right here. You're the guy in charge. There you go. And we're going to watch together, and then you can break it down as we go in the first couple minutes if you would. Is okay. that all right with you? No problem. No problem. Now, we're going to get to see a new look, by the way, too, because you've got a freshman in the jump circle from Syracuse, New York, <laughs> jumping it up. That's a new look for you against the redshirt senior. That's because Genesis, we in practice, and that's all she wants to do is be the center. She wants to jump the ball. So here we go. Blue versus white in the women's game. The guys are going to do the same thing here in about 20, 25 minutes.
That's about as uncontested tap as you're going to see in college basketball. <laughs> of course, we have a really good group of kids this year. I was I was kind of worried about the freshmen coming in, but they came in and adjusted very well, and the, the returning kids accepted them, and, and they're really gelling together right now. So Chance Graham stepped into a three, came rimming off. Now an answer three goes back of the rim, no, for the blue team, and running back the other way is Crooms, a sophomore out of Bronx, New York. So each team on the opening possession failing to score. <laughs> not what you wanted to see, no. but however, you're not coaching this game right now. No, I, I'm fortunate I get to sit and watch. But we're taping it, so I'm sure we'll sit back and watch film later on this evening. So now top side left from our vantage point. Kroom swings it far side now. Bradford looks inside. Glass and good. Post entry feed to Albert and the transfer scores. That's, that's the inside presence that we're looking for. If she can just catch the score inside, I think that'll help us out, especially with the shooters that we have. Bombs away from three. That's exactly what you're looking for there. Now 3-2 in favor of the white. That was Sahai Corby who shot that. She was you know, New York City's player of the year last year. Here comes the white. From the video standpoint, they're coming right to left. From our vantage point, from the video standpoint, it's opposite because we're at the scorer's table next to the benches. Nice drive to the right. First whistle of the night, creating contact. That was Mariah, Mar Mariah Smith with the drive there. She uh, played at Newtown High School last and led them to a state championship. How easy was it for you on the recruiting trail this year to bring in this many youngsters to say, hey, you're going to get a chance to play right away? Uh, that, that made it a lot easier, you know, with the, the seniors that we had that left last year with Keenan Samuels and, and a couple other kids who left, you know, it left the door open for them to play. And fortunately, they've come in practice and they've worked hard. We, we may end up starting two or three freshmen. So 5-2 after two Smith free throws in favor of the white. Blue looking to answer. Off the bounce far side. Downs out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. Swings it left corner, triple to tie, goes long, offensive rebound. Love to see those. However, a whistle and shot clock did not reset, I believe, on the air ball. Now it's down to 11. Should stay with blue. As the officials, Coach Burroughs, already in midseason form. I like that. <laughs> to be on target, to pick up that, that missed shot clock there. First game on the road, November 12th at Baylor. Almost a back-to-back -back as you play. Stephen F. Austin is the triple to tie. Is good by Downs, and we're deadlocked at five. A little back-to-back -back Baylor and Stephen F. Austin open the season. Yes. We opened it up with, with a tough, tough road uh, stretch there against Baylor. You know, Stephen F. Austin was here last year, and I think we should have played them a little closer than what we did. But I think we're really going to be prepared when we go back this year. So Beverly trying to back her way in, kicks it out near side of the right. Uncontested going to the right is Genesis Lucas. Saw a lot of that last year. Yes. I'm looking forward to that again. Seven to five. Blue back in front off the errant blue shot. White coming the other way. Nice pass to the doorstep. Hit the underside of the glass. And last touch by the white out of bounds. Fun group. Genesis is really enjoy playing with this group simply because they like to run the floor. The other girls like to get out, and she loves making passes to them. So that, uh, that's been going well for us in the preseason. Swing to the freshman. Bradford runs down the lane, back of the rim, no good. And the rebound pops out to Graham. Graham running the break, deflected away. Graham keeps it alive. And now top side right. That's a three ball, back of the rim, no good out of the hand to Corby. Tries it again a second time, and Rainbow's at home. To put the white up 10-5. 8.40 to go. And we're only going 12 minutes total, right? Yes, this is 12 minutes. Far side right. There's a triple answer. Back of the rim, no good for Downs. After a bounce, swings it your side left. Crooms a touch. Now down to the left side. A pull-up from 10 is on the way and good for Oladier. And she is on the board to make it 
This is, I'm glad to see the kids playing well, as well as they are. We have a bunch of kids who can shoot the ball. Right of the rim, no good. On the triple by Corby. Far side right, triple try is on the way. Rim and off, offensive rebound. A little kick out from five, rim and off. Follow on the way again, rim and off. Well, they're doing what you're teaching them, using the window. It's just not going in right now. It's just not going in. 7.45 to go in the inter-squad. And a media timeout. I knew they liked me. 7.45 <laughs> to go in the uh, opening half, if you will. It's the white leading the blue, 10-7 here at Coppin State. We'll continue to visit with Coach Dwayne Burroughs. And, Coach, you, you see the first couple of minutes of this. What really stands out to you so far? And, and I have a follow-up to you as well. Okay. Um, just, like I said, the fact that we're – Every day in practice, we're getting better. And at this point, that's all I can ask. We're putting in numerous offenses, working on our defensive end of the floor, and, and like I said, each each day, we're, we're doing something better in practice. And once the coaches, we go upstairs and we talk about it, and we're always adding something new, and the kids are really picking it up. So I, I'm really pleased at that at this, this so far. We talked about the non-conference. It, it, it gets no easier because you got the Mount here at Charleston Southern, uh, Missouri in a tournament, and back-to-back -back at the Cal Classic, and then... On the road, ODU, UNC Charlotte, Middle Tennessee State, uh, at West Virginia, at VCU, Maryland non-conference, which we'll be doing here uh, on video and on radio. And then conference, of course, opens up first of the year. In that non-conference slate, what do you expect from such a young group? I want to see them mature. I want to see the maturity in them, and, and I want to see them. I told them we're going to be tested. You're going to be tested, and you're going to have a tough, tough stretch. On the bounce, top side right. Corby, shot clock violation. Uh, it, it's a tough stretch, and what I, really, what I really like about the schedule is it's going to prepare us for conference play. You know, last year we had a tough schedule that we had, and we went into conference play, and we started out 4-0 in conference. So it really helps us with that. So I, I don't mind playing those games. The, the kids, sometimes the kids don't like it, but, you know, everybody talks about how tough of a schedule it is, but it prepares us for what we really want, and that's the conference play. Well, and, Coach, you mentioned it. You're going to see top 25, top 40 competition as it's glass and good to make it a 12-7 white lead. That's something that the media a lot of times doesn't pay attention to. They're going, well, the score was this, the score was that. I understand that. As you mentioned, the non-con schedule, I understand, matters. But you're playing for a conference championship. That's yes. what's going to get it done. Exactly. You know, and I'll play the tough games. That's if it's going to prepare us for those, you know, for our non -com for our conference play. If you could give two assists, give two assists. <laughs> Olivetti scores again, makes it a 12-9 white lead. So now it's a one possession game. As you coach up your coaches, is there anything you're telling them right now with the white team with a one possession lead on your turnover? What would you be telling them? Make sure we don't turn the ball over. <laughs> 15 you know, to shoot. They just know to take care of the basketball. You know, don't turn it over. Make the easy pass. You know, sometimes even in practice later, we've been trying to make a tough pass, and I don't understand why. Just make the easy pass and let's get two points to go down the other end of the floor and play some defense. And the red shirt senior trying to make it happen late in the shot clock yes. turns it over. <laughs> yes. Again, it's a scrimmage. That's why they're getting all the bugs worked out right now. Bounce it down to the block to Albert. Should be back to Davidson. Davidson left side behind the arc. Hands it up to Bradford, coming right to the line of the lane. Floats one up, rim, glass, rim and off. We need to have a talking to to that rim. It's not been kind to her so far. <laughs> not at all. Offensive rebound, a step-in jumper's on the way. That's good for Albert. Her second field goal now makes this a one-point game at 12-11. I have to ask you about your counterpart now on the guys' side. The energy of, of Juan Dixon now leading the men's program. And a three ball is good, and the White right back on top, 15-11. Oh, the, the excitement around here with Juan being on campus is just unreal. Um, I haven't really seen it like this since I was here as a student when, when Larry Stewart and all of them were here playing. It, it's just interesting. It's very interesting for us to see, you know, the, the campus to come back like that. Three ball for Corby, her second of the game, 15-11. White in the lead. Blue with the defensive rebound. Now head of the key with it is Downs. 
Coming left of the screen from Davidson. Now Davidson on the catch right. 18 to shoot. 4.50 to go. Lob inside. Does she never not smile? <laughs> She's always smiling. Tommy with the catch. Couldn't finish. Outlet ahead. That's a foul. Rim it off. Beverly should be rewarded with two free throws as she was in the act of shooting. Camille's always smiling. That's now. Yes. Wait till we get into the new year and those conference battles start showing up. I'm sure that expression will change. How special is it for you to take on uh, Maryland and, and Brenda Freeze and, and her program on your home court? Oh, unreal. Unreal. A lot of people ask, how did you guys get that game? You know, I, I, I look at, at Brenda's schedule, and every year she plays a lot of the local schools, which I, th which I really think is fantastic. I think they got Eastern Shore on the schedule, Loyola on the schedule, UMBC. I, I think it's huge that she's, she, you know, we get the opportunity to play against Maryland. She has a fantastic program, and I would love to be able to mirror my program just off of hers alone. 16-14 after a split pair of free throws from the white team, the Blue Answers, with Downs a second three in this opening half, if you will. Well, now we're getting late stages yes. of the second half with just 4.11 to go. Schedule looks great. If you've not picked up your schedule poster yet, you need to do that. That came out today. They did a fantastic job with it. Chance doesn't like her picture, but she never likes any of the pictures she takes. <laughs> I mean, you've got some angry-looking kids right there. I mean, <laughs> as you mentioned, I mean, she's battling after getting the rebound and fixing to take it right back up and score. Yeah. That's all right. Top side left. Downs wants a three for the lead. Hard off the glass. No good. Here comes Lucas spinning in traffic. Left side, 15-foot step in by Pickett is good. 18-14 in favor of the White. Another media timeout. That will allow us to welcome in the fans listening in on WNST AM 1570 here in Baltimore. Brand new radio partner here at Coppin State. We welcome them in and looking forward to those home games, especially the conference doubleheaders where you guys are, are taking the lead, Coach. Yes. I, 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 of course, we always look forward to the MEAC games. Um, you know, my, my kids are really looking forward to it. We discussed it. We told them it's tough competition every single night. You can't take a night off in the MEAC because if you do, you will lose. You know, I, I told them that one of the things I want us to do is be prepared to play every single game. There's a star beside the game for January 20. Oh, that means that's that's in conference. I knew that already. <laughs> but is there the extra star because it is the battle with the rival Morgan State? Morgan State, yes. That, that's always a battle. You know, it was a tough battle here la last year. Um, and the game went back and forth. Fortunately, we won it here. But then when we go over, went over to Morgan, you know, we didn't do well. And it's a situation where Coppin hasn't won to Morgan in probably six or seven years. And we're looking to change that. You know, and, and Ed Davis runs a fantastic program. And I'm sure that they're going to be ready to play us as well. i, I got to ask you, is this a preseason that's a little different where you started the season with with expectations and real aspirations to go in there and claim that Mia crown at the end of the year? It is because this is this is my first group. You know, I can claim this freshman class as my freshman class. Last year I got the job late, and I, I had to you know play with what was here, which I didn't mind doing at all because it was a bunch of group, a, a, a group of uh, good kids. Three ball for the lead. Out of the hand of Downs, her third three. She's got nine. 18 17. White by one, leading the blue with 318 to go. Not quite two for one time now, right? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet? I'll let the coaches suffer through this one. Corby's got the handle. Taking it right of the lane and a hand check call. We saw a ton of that last year. Yes. Out between the rings, as I like to call it, and your guards would play up under the offensive player. Yes. Going for the ball, you'd do a great job in transition, knocking it away, going the other way, and that hand check call would get yes. whistled. That's something that we're working on in practice. Um, we're, we're really stressing that in practice with our kids. A lot, a lot of the high school kids, I think they can get away with it in high school, but I keep telling you, you can't do it here. They're going to call it. You know, you get one touch and you're done. So, so Smith knocks home with three, four-point lead at 21-17. There's Graham with the look and the rebound. 
No smile. Fires up an answer three. Back of the rim, no good. Offensive rebound and follow. Got blocked away. I think Patricia Albert got a hand on that and deflected it away. So now the blue comes back, trying to cut it to a one-possession gap. Ribbon off on the Albert try. Graham over the top. Long outlet, two bounces, glass, rim, good. Good gather by Alexis Taylor. Yes, yes. I'm glad to see her, but she's been doing very well this off this preseason. What was a one-point game, now at the six. Hold the phone, downs her fourth three in this scrimmage, and right back to a one-possession game at 23-20. We talk about answers. That's a great answer from a freshman for yes. you. Answer triple comes rimming off. A lot of standing around. <laughs> They're tired. <laughs> that means we got to get back to doing some more conditioning. Minute 45 to go. The pass coming left got deflected. Graham had it poked away. Gets it back. Now to the floor court. Smith wants a three. Back of the rim, no good. Battle for the rebound. That's knocked out of bounds. I believe last touch by Taylor. 94 seconds to go. Were the instructions to call late half timeouts? No, they're not using any timeouts tonight. They're not allowed? No. That's so they mean. will have to go two for one down the stretch if needed. Okay. Yes. We're going to make them work extra hard tonight. 23-20. White with the lead. Clean look at a three to tie. And indeed downs now with 15. Ties it at 23 with 118 to go. Oh, you got to like what you're seeing right here. Yes. Tons of made threes. White goes empty on the offensive end. Up the right side, Crooms behind the arc. Will she dance back for a three? Bounce it off as we go under a minute to go. Bradford step in, rim it off. Offensive rebound to Albert. Kicks it back out, and it's deflected. Last touch by the White. And with that hitting the rim, did it reset? It did down to 18. Down to 18. Right corner, Crooms fakes right, comes back to her left, backs in the lane, fights one up in traffic and drains it. 25-23 on our first lead change tonight. 40 seconds to go. Corby swings it left, thinking about a three, and it's blocked by Crooms on the attempt by Smith. Crooms. Duck in, dribble, dumps it off right side, Albert from 10, rim it off, loose ball tapped out, shot clock's turned off, 23 seconds to go, step in three, goes wide right for downs, and out of bounds with 19.9 to go. She let the moment in the crowd get to her, coach. Yes, she did. <laughs> she was feeling it. Yes. She did all the work, she should have went ahead and shot it, just reward yourself. <laughs> but how about Crooms on the shake and bake? Yes. Save that for the season. Yes. Deep three, and we're talking a step inside half court and for the lead. Corby now with nine. 26-25 white, under 10 to go. Crooms to the forecourt, now between the rings. Everybody smiling. Headed the key three for the lead. She claims she got fouled. Six tenths to go, and now the blue has to foul. Got a foul with six tenths, got a foul. <laughs> Down one. Pick it to inbound. I just hope we can make shots like this during the year. Inbound comes to Smith. She'll fire it down the floor. And the women's inter-squad scrimmage, very entertaining, comes to a close with the white on a three ball nearly at the horn to get away with a 26-25 win. Yes. They'll talk about it all weekend long. And they, they're going to want to rematch on Monday morning, I guarantee it. Yeah, but how about the range? I mean, from the wing. And, and what I like about it is they shoot it with confidence. You know, th this group of freshmen that we have, they really shoot the ball extremely well. They handle, ball, handle the ball well. So I, I can see us scoring a bunch of high scoring, ha having a high scoring games. Last year we were averaging close to 45, 46 points, and I just told them we're not going to win basketball games that way. So we had to bring in some kids who could score the ball, and fortunately I think we did, and I think we're going to go to another level with this group. Looking forward to it, Coach. Thank you so much for the time. Great contest there in the inter-squad scrimmage. 26-25 in favor of the White. Looking forward to seeing you as the season no rolls on. Thank you. Really appreciate it. That's the women's head coach here at Coppin State, Dwayne Burroughs. Appreciate his time. That's 12 good minutes right there. And a fantastic finish. 26-25 with a 40-footer to win it? Are you kidding me? And it's only a scrimmage. 
Take a quick time out of, uh, let's see, about two and a half minutes. Come back with the men's introductions and the inter-squad scrimmage. I don't know if the guys can live up to that. 40-footer nearly at the horn to win it. We're back after this time out of the home of the Eagles. So back courtside here at the PEC at Coppin State University, Baltimore, Maryland. Todd Bartley with you. Soon to be joined by Alex Silva during the men's inter-squad scrimmage. As the men are now coached by Juan Dixon in his first year. We'll get his breakdown on his staff. And also welcome in the fans listening in on WNST AM 1570. And I believe we're ready for the introduction of the Coppin State Eagles men's basketball team to my partner how about it
just so happens coach Dixon also has his uh, youth football team in the house tonight as well so as the Eagles come together they have three minutes up on the warm-up clock to get it going and again blue tops and white tops will just give you names and numbers in live action as the men get set to tip it off here at Coppin State. I have a feeling Mr. Brownlee, who is wearing a hoodie underneath his jersey, having seen him take off and land last year, may well be a cape instead of a hoodie. 
And with that, we welcome in the first-year head coach of Coppage State, Juan Dixon. First of all, thanks for taking the time. No, thanks for having me. So you're announced as the <laughs> head men's basketball coach here at Coppin State. Yeah. What did that mean to you and your family? Uh, it's a dream come true. It really is. I mean, it's something that I talked about uh, when I was playing professionally, that I wanted to be a coach. And I talked about it five years ago when I was at the University of Maryland, saying I want to be a head coach at 38. So it's amazing how powerful the mind is. You, know, you can speak things into existence, and, and I'm here leading this uh, men's basketball program. Who is the biggest influence on you as a coach? I have a little foundation, Calvin Hall, Gary Williams, uh, and a lot of our philosophies uh, stem from playing at the highest level in the NBA. So I'm looking forward to the challenge. Uh, I'm looking forward to teaching these young men a brand of basketball that they haven't witnessed before. First recruiting class, and the thing that jumps off the page at me, couple guys from Philly and a guy from New York City. How'd you pull that off? Hey, Phil Gatano, John Oslander. They have uh, great connects up in the northeast part of the country, and uh, we're going to continue to recruit that area. Of course, uh, Fane Mitchell had a lot of success with Philly guys, uh, so we're going to try to get that going again. Coach, i got to ask you, you got a special player in Dewan Clayton, who you inherited as a sophomore out of yeah. Bowie, Maryland. How much of yourself does he remind you of? He's a, he's a star. He's a star. You know, he's just going to get some thorough coaching. Uh, he's an unbelievable player on both ends of the floor. He moves unlike any player I've ever witnessed before. And the kid the kid has a bright future. Uh, we're just going to continue to groom him to be the leader that we need him to be. You know what this league is all about. You do a non-conference schedule to get you ready. Oh, yeah. You bring in some width and some height with your bigs. Oh, yeah. We have some skilled bigs. You know, you're going to see... See tonight that our bigs um, can dribble, pass, shoot. Uh, they're very skilled defensively. They have they long and athletic, quick feet. So we're excited about our future. So much of your game developed at the pro level, NBA, overseas. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see pick and roll a uh, lot? A ton, a ton with with great spacing. And you, you're going to see. You know, we, you know, me and my staff. Our attention to detail, we truly believe, is unlike any staff in the country. Uh, and we stress the little things every day. And our guys are picking it up. Like I said, it's a different brand than these guys have ever played before. So we're, we're excited uh, to see what these guys can do in our system. I, I mentioned a moment ago, Coach, that uh, Mr. Brownlee is wearing a hoodie. I, I don't think it's a hoodie in the scrimmage. I think it's a cape. Yeah. <laughs> and he just showed you take off and landing. The kid can fly. Yeah, yeah, the kid can go, man. And Lou is, is one of our players we expect to have a big year. And he's been playing great in practice, and we expect him to uh, put up some good numbers this year and have a lot of fun. Certainly appreciate the first visit. Looking to many, many more. Hey, and too, uh, good well. luck this season. Thanks a lot, man. There it is. Head coach Juan Dixon. Great first visit. And with that, we're going to welcome in a debut. So we go from a coaching debut to a broadcast debut. And Alex Silva joins us. How you doing? How you doing? Well, we have a women's scrimmage that went down to the last five seconds with nearly a half-court shot to win it. How about the guys getting ready to yeah. suit it up here against the uh, the Blues and the Whites? I'm hoping that we see some more excitement. The women did great. Like, Mia, did you see that move? She looked like she was in the WNBA. Yeah. I was like, Mia, where would you get that move from? So, like you said, I want to see the guy with the cape. See what he's about to do. Well, we have three veteran officials in the MEAC and here in the state of Maryland as well. They do all levels of college basketball. And if they're bringing in the three vets for the inner squad scrimmage, I think they expect this thing to go up and down the floor a little bit. I think that's true. Do you think they're going to let them play or do you think they're going to call, call a couple of fouls? I think in the first minute, minute and a half, They'll let them go a little bit, and then maybe tighten it up ever so slightly. I don't think we're going to see a lot of hand checks. Anybody getting dunked on tonight? Everybody and anybody. And I know it is a Friday, and twice on Friday. <laughs> At least twice. So it is Simpson, Morgan, Thomas, Drummond, and a fresh face in front of us for the white. Cedric Council Jr. Nearly a turnover on the catch by Troy. 
Coming left side, Brownlee without the cape, goes glass rim, no good. Ooh. Tapped around, and Thomas will control on the defensive rebound. Thomas now to the floor court, steps right, fires up a jumper. Wide left. Clayton with his head up, bounces ahead now. Drury right of the lane, got caught in traffic. Kicks Ooh. it back out, step right three, is on the way, and good up the right wing for DeAndre Fair. And the blue jumps out to an early 3-0 lead. Now Simpson with it. Brings it back to Council Jr. Ball screen hand up to Thomas. Thomas going left of the lane. Floats one up. Rim, no good. Rebound to Simpson. Fights it up at the left. Glass rim, it spun off. Rebound to Clayton. Alex, when you get your lead guard cleaning the defensive glass, that's usually a good thing. Yes. Now the three's going up. Ooh! And the three by Dewan Clayton. Puts the blue in front, 6 nothing. So he clears the glass, runs the point, takes the shot, and makes it. My type of player. Far side left. Now for Drummond. Swings it off, head of the key now for Thomas. Thomas coming left. At the elbow, fires up the jumper, rim it off. Rebound to Andrews Fulton. Now for Clayton. Going opposite the screen. Coming left of the screen. Swings it right corner. Three. And the three out of the corner is good for Brownlee. Score is 9-0. Blew up. Well, we heard from uh, Coach Burroughs, no timeouts in the women's scrimmage. Maybe the guy's thinking about it. <laughs> yes. May need a little one. Under 10 minutes to go. Pass. Here in the men's scrimmage. Oh, taken two. away by Andrews Fulton. Threw it into traffic. Thomas with it. Line. Lane. Scoops it up the right hand and scores. Wide open. So the white is on the board, trailing 9-2, roughly two and a half minutes in. Trory steps inside the arc, wants a jumper, rim it off. Morgan coming left to right now to Thomas. Thomas swings it right corner now for Morgan. He wants a three. On the way and good. All right, now the score is 5-9 with... Blue still winning, but it's getting a little closer now. Two possession game. Blue up by four. Clayton coming left. Bounce it, weak side of the right. Andrews Fulton pulls up, rim it off. Partially altered. I believe Simpson may have got a piece of it. Here comes Thomas. Thomas, right of the lane, gallops in. Glass, rim it spun off. Simpson tried to ram it home and got fouled on the way up. There's the whistle you were looking for. Here we go. Now let's see if we can put it in the basket. Two free shots. Jordan Hardwick at 6'7", a freshman out of Weathersfield, Connecticut, set to check in. Seven to go. Simpson at the free throw line. Cans it. Makes it. Cuts it to a one possession lead at 9-6. So after a 9-0 lead, Alex is 6-0 run by the White. Resilience. Ooh. There you go. Seven. Good again. Seven straight. No timeout needed. He's 100% he's at the free throw line right now. So now Clayton into the forecourt. Now for Fair. He wants a three off that right wing. Rim it off. Rebound to Thomas. So now the White a chance to tie with a two. A three for the lead. It would be their first of the night. And the key three for the lead. Rim it off out of the hands of Cedric Council Jr. Clayton on the gallop. Right to the ten. Glass. Rim it spun out. Rebound Andrews Fulton. Underneath the basket. Behind the back. Was that a behind the back pass? Well, he had it knocked away. So now Morgan's got it. He'll leave it in the backcourt. Here comes Thomas. Thomas into the forecourt. Carried the basketball. Hey, wait. Wait for 
for that official to make that call in that spot. He literally had to turn the basketball over. Because he's a guy that lets him play. So now Clayton coming right to left. Handed off to Andrews Fulton. Right side Trower. Back head of the key now Andrews Fulton. Ball screen handoff now for Brownlee. Brownlee bounce it left of the lane. Reverse it off head of the key. Trowry right to the rack and scores with the left hand. 11-7. Blue expands the lead to four with 7.35 to go. Here comes Drummond. Nice screen. Morgan came off of it to his right. Glass rim no good. Couldn't connect. Trowry now for Clayton. Clayton explodes right of the lane, right to the rim. He got fouled on the way up. That was going to be a highlight. Yes. It was a great hesitation before he got to the rim, too. And with 7.19 to go, basically in the game, this brings us to halftime, if you will, an immediate timeout. So we're back after a 60-second timeout on the home of the Eagles. So back court shot here to PEC, Compass State University. Men's inner squad scrimmage, Midnight Mayhem, 7.19 to go. After the women's game, went 26-25 to the white. Juan Dixon, his first coaching year and first actual action here at Compass State. And he is into it, coaching both the blue and the white. Even though the assistants are league guys on the bench for each team, he is in it. So that means whoever wins, he wins, no matter, no That's matter exactly what. That's exactly right. It's a win-win for him. <laughs> Except when the team that comes up short goes to practice the next day and says, uh, by the way, there's some running in your future. Clayton knocks home the free throw to make it a 12-7 blue lead. Second one's good. 13-7 on two Clayton makes. He's got five total points here tonight. And welcome in the fans on WNST AM 1570, radio home here in Baltimore of Coppin State basketball all season long. Move it, move it, Thomas with it ahead of the key, swings it near side of the right. Drummond with it. Backs it out, now takes it right through the double team. Gave it up to Morgan, and he carried the basketball. And when the official signals that, Alex, that they're literally turning the ball upside down, that's what they're doing. Yeah, that may be something that we got to work on before season starts. Not to say you can't do that on the playground. However, <laughs> it, apparently it's going to be a point of emphasis this season. Definitely. Brownlee with it. Top side left. Swings it off to Trowry. Goes right of the lane. Ooh. Ducks in. Nice move. Nice Rim. It spun off. Rebound Andrews Fulton. Kicks it out to the top. Swing left from Boyce. Top side left to Clayton. He's drawing all kind of traffic right in front of us. Shot clock to 19. Reverse it off. Down the lane with a right-hand runner. It would not drop for the blue team. And I believe Trowry thought he got fouled. Thomas weaves his way around the screen. Goes strong with a right hand and scores. Makes it 13-9. Blue by four. Closing into the six-minute mark. Clayton with it top side right. Coming to his left. Line to the lane. Kick out near side left. Brownlee a three. It's on the way. Good. Brownlee's second triple gives him six. 
Makes it a 16-9 blue lead. Keeping in mind the blue team, Alex, jumped out to that 9-0 lead. The closest the white team has been is 9-7. 9-7, that is correct. Turning right is Drummond. Drummond to the free throw line. A pull up, rim and off for Simpson, and a tap follow is good for Hardwick. It's 16 11. So is this where they want to be? Down five, five to go? I think they want to get back to that two point. Only a basket away, but I mean, they're creeping. Two possession lead, as Alex mentioned. 16-11, reverse it off, step-in jumper. Andrews Fulton buries it at the free throw line. Back to a seven-point gap at 18-11. Under five to go. In between the rings now, Simpson. Simpson, left side to Hardwick. Hardwick reverse it off to Thomas, stolen by Clayton. Clayton on the run, goes strong on Thomas, fading away from the basket, rim it off. Tap follow wouldn't drop. Stepping left in the lane, no good for Trowry. And battle for the ball, and I believe who stepped out of bounds. Number 15, he stepped out of bounds. So it's off white and Blake Simpson. It stays with blue. Fresh 30 second shot clock, 4.33 to go. Changes made both ways. We'll give it to you in real time. Clayton on the inbound, near side left, Brownlee coming to his right. Hands it back to Clayton. Fights through the double team. Goes left in the lane. Shovels it off. Andrews Fulton to step in. Rim it rattled out. Rebound to Simpson. Now for Thomas. Thomas to the forecourt. Right side behind the arc. Now to the head of the key. Backs it out left side. 18 to shoot. He goes left. Stripped of the ball. Over the top feed. Boys to the rack. Two-hand finish. Nice. Freshman makes it 20-11. Blue in front, less than four minutes to go. And you hear from the bench, go, go, go. White down by nine, they got to go. Simpson out of Morgan. Morgan, left side, defended by Boyce. And the reversal hit the official, and it's out of bounds. We have a time on the floor. 3.41 to go. It's now the blue of Coppin State leading the white, 20-11. Back after a 60-second timeout on the home of the Eagles. Todd Barley, Alex Silva, court side at the PEC at Coppin State University, closing out the men's inter squad game. Midnight Mayhem 2011, the blue in front of the white. Let me go back to my notes. So it would be a split night as the white jerseys in the women's game 126 25. So now the blue team for the men, they're trying to split the evening. Definitely. Did you think there was going to be more Duncan, though, coming out of here? I, thought I did. Like just that. one so far, but we still have Alex 341 to go in this contest. Plenty of time. Regular season opens November 10th at the University of Oregon. It is slated for a midnight Eastern tip. Then to the road at East Carolina on November 12th. First home game, December 6th against the U.S. Naval Academy. 7 o'clock on December 6th here at the PEC. Boyce has it for the blue, backing it out left side. Steps left of the lane, fights one up in traffic. Glass no good, easy tap follow up the weak side by Chad Andrews Fulton. And now the blue has doubled up the white, 22-11. Scoop of the right hand, and it just rimmed off for Drummond. Trowry on the run, out line, lane, left hand runner. Glass and good. 
starting to think that's possession on defense. The white team has to do some type of press. I know they've been practicing it, so hopefully they will press. 2.45 to go. 8 nothing run by the blue. Left side, Thomas. 15-foot step in is good. Makes it 24-13. Thomas now with six, all from two. Curl left hand off now for Boyce. Boyce going left of the lane. Bouncing off weak side of the right. And Chad Andrews Fulton finishes again. Give him six. Boy, what a presence inside he is. Makes it 26-13. Blue in front of the white, 2.15 to go. Drummond left wing behind the arc. Swings it off into the key now to Thomas. Thomas going right. Skip pass, far side left. Now to Drummond. Drummond goes left, bouncing off now to Simpson. Simpson backs it out all the way to the top to Thomas. Thomas, a step back jumper off the left wing, rimming off. Rebound Simpson. Back to the top of the key now. Drummond swings it left side to Thomas. Around the Simpson screen. Simpson on the pick and roll, goes left to the lane, steps in. Might have got away with a walk. Rimming off, rebound Andrews Fulton. That was a nod of agreement of yes, he did get away with a walk. <laughs> it's preseason, don't worry, it's preseason. He's getting out of the way now. Top side right, Andrews oh. Fulton. Right to the rim, and Clayton, yes, will count it as a dunk. I was about to say, I thought he was about to dunk it in. We'll count it as a dunk. 28-13. Blue over the white, 75 seconds to go. Council Jr.'s got it now between the rings to Morgan. Morgan going right. Reverse it off, nearly stolen away. Kicked out right side with 12 to shoot. Three ball goes rimming off. Tap follow won't drop for the white. Over the top for Boyce. Boyce runs it right of the lane. Draws some contact, rim good, and a foul. A freshman from Jamaica, New York, now makes it a 30-13 blue lead. That's 17 points right there. 16. Free throws good. Boyce now with five. 31-13. So now they've gone reverse. Oh, yeah. 18 now. Woo. Thomas on the bounce. Top side right. Reverse it off now for Drummond. Drummond. Now to Thomas. Left wing. Scoop of the right hand and scores. That was a great take. Thomas, the senior out of Largo, Maryland, makes it 31-15. Blue by 16. Five-second gap, game, and shot clock. Trowey back between the rings. Out of Andrews Fulton. Ball screen hand off. Out of Boyce. Boyce going right. Runs in the lane. Fights one up with the right hand. Rim it off. Shot clock turned off. Game clock to 15 and counting. Thomas over the top feed. Council Jr. will punch it down. But we also count that as cherry picking. He was down there before everybody. In soccer, they call that offsides. Final three <laughs> seconds will roll off Clayton Leonard of the forecourt, and that'll do it. In a men's game, it's the blue team defeating the white team. 31-17. And Midnight Mayhem is in the books for 2017-2018. For the men, they open up November 10th on the road at the University of Oregon for the women. Two days later, they're at Baylor to open their season. Same night, the men are at East Carolina to take on the Pirates in a 5 o'clock tip. The women tip at 7 Eastern time at Stephen F. Austin on November 12th. Alex, thank you so much for taking the time tonight. Thank you for having me tonight. So for our guest tonight, Dwayne Burroughs, head coach of the women's basketball team here at Coppin State, men's head coach Juan Dixon with his pregame interview as well. Alex Silva, my partner tonight. Everybody involved here at Coppin State, it's so so much fun to be a part of this program. Thank you so much for the welcome back after the great fun we had a year ago. Welcome in to the new partner of WNST AM 1570 and their entire crew as well. Cannot wait for the home openers for both teams. For the men, that is December 6th against the U.S. Naval Academy. For the women, it's November 18th against in-state rival Mount St. Mary's. It's a 2 o'clock tip on November 18th. Thanks so much for listening on the radio and on the Internet and for watching online as well at CoppinStateSports.com. Tom Harley, final scores, final time tonight here from the PEC in the women's contest. The white defeats the blue on a half-court shot with three seconds to go, 26-25 in the men's contest. 
it was over early. A 9-0 blue run to open the scoring. They win going away over the Whites, 31-17 on the home of the Eagles.